Hey everyone, my name is Max, welcome to my channel, and in this video I'll be taking a very close and detailed look at this pretty beautiful, I should say, Ibanez RG421 HBFM, which I believe stands for High Performance Series. And by the way, if you haven't subscribed to my Instagram yet, I'd really appreciate if you do. That's where you can find beautiful close-ups of guitars, quick shootouts and demos on many different things, as well as regular updates on what's going on here and what I'm currently working on. Alright, now back to the video. As always, I'll be using my penalty point system, which means I'll be testing this guitar according to my checklist, and every time I'll see a problem, the guitar will be getting a penalty point. The less points at the end of the video, the better. And let's begin this video with uh, listening to what this guitar sounds like in the mix. HPFM, or High Performance Series, is a part of the Ibanez standard range. However, it comes with a couple of improvements that make it stand out, like Dimarzo pickups, for example. Today, which is January 11, 2021, this guitar clocks in at 699 at Sweetwater. And if you are located in Europe, that's gonna be 646 euros at Tomon. And I see the price has dropped, because it used to be 680 just a couple of weeks ago. As always, I'll give you all the links below, such as you can check the actual price in your region. And I would really appreciate you using those links, even if you're not interested in this guitar, because every time somebody clicks them, it brings happiness, joy and support to my channel. Thank you in advance! Here's the box, and it says RG421HPFM1P01, which stands for the first modification of this guitar. And it came from Meinl, which is Ibanez distributor here in Germany. Let's open the box and take a look at what's inside. There is no gig back here, but at this price, I believe guitars shall be coming with one. So here's the first penalty point for that. Okay, but what do we have? Tools, three Allen wrenches, a message from Daddario. Apparently, this guitar comes with Daddario strings. Ibanez Maintenance Manual by Hoshino Gaki in multiple languages. And that's it, I now can take the guitar out of the box and unwrap it. And it's about time we take a closer look at it. Alright, let's go through the specs real quick. The body of this guitar is made of Niato. And here's what it looks like up close. Apparently this is a four-piece body, I can see one, two, three and four pieces here. It has a beautiful flame maple on top, and yeah, the official website says top, and I don't find this term to be very transparent. In fact, half of you will find it misleading, since what we have here is not an actual thick top, but a very thin layer of maple on top of the other body. It is a veneer. If it was a real top, we would be able to see it going all the way through here, which we don't. So it is a veneer, and here's a penalty point. The body has a pretty standard right-hand bevel on the front, a belly cut on the back, and some wood was taken off this rounded neck heel. There is also a binding around the whole body of the guitar. 
It is a bolt on construction and the neck itself is made of this pretty nicely looking piece of roasted maple. The headstock is glued in, you can see where exactly, and it has no volute. It has a Hotobo fretboard, which is slightly darker than the rest of the neck. The headstock has a matching flame maple veneer. Just like any other Ibanez RG, this one has a standard scale of 25 and a half inches. The fretboard radius is 16 inches. Here's the neck profile at the first fret. It is supposed to be a Wizard 3 neck, and as you can see, it is very similar to the Wizard profile, maybe slightly thinner. Very different to Fender Modern C. And here's what it looks like compared to other guitars I've measured so far. And the same on the 12th fret. Well, it is thicker than Wizard, but still thinner than Fender Modern C, even though slightly wider. And here they are all together. This guitar comes with DiMarzio Tone Zone in the bridge and Air Norton in the neck. And you may know that I'm not a big fan of these pickups, since they generate much more hum than any other humbuckers. But I must admit that in this specific guitar they do a better job and show much more potential than in the RG1070 PBZ that I reviewed last year because of the coil split switch. It really makes them shine. The bridge is simple and easy to use. It is Ibanez branded and this is F106 model with strings going through the body of the guitar. And you can see that the final of the sixth string is slightly offset. And by looking at those colorful string ball ends, we can tell these are Daddario strings. 9. 242, to be more specific. Alright, moving on to the headstock. The headstock says the guitar was made in Indonesia in 2019. As I mentioned before, there is no volute here. The headstock is angled, which means no need in retainers or string trees. Nothing special about the tuners, as always you can adjust how tight they are using these screws here. The front of the headstock has the same flame maple veneer as the body. There are a couple of special things here though. First of all, you will not need any additional tool to get to the truss rod adjustment. That is very efficient. Here's what it looks like inside. And second, I figured out this is a GraphTech self-lubricating nut, even though the official specs don't explicitly tell you that. The controls include volume and tone knobs and a three-way pickup switch. And this is a coil split switch for both humbuckers. Reasonable strap buttons with fluffy spacers between them and the body, which is good. Traditionally for Ibanez, a good solution for the output connector, because absolutely any straight or angled plug will fit in here without any problems, even if you have something really exotic like Providence or, let's say, Lex cable with probably the smallest plugs in the world. If you haven't checked one yet, do that, they're really good. And here's another special feature, luminescent side dots, which glow in the dark. This is a high gloss finish and this particular color is called Blue Reef Gradation. Transparent finish on the back of the guitar, which is a high gloss as well. The neck has a very smooth satin feel, just as the fretboard. It is also finished in some way. Here's a close-up of the neck pocket, looks very clean. And here's the other side, looks good as well. I have found one little issue with the finish, let's zoom in a little bit. There, you see how the edge of the wood right next to the binding turned green? And yeah, it is completely random, so your guitar will not have that, but it is worth a penalty point. Sorry, Ibanez. This guitar has 24 frets, and according to the specs, these are jumbo frets. Well, let's check it out. Here's the width. And the height. Yeah, looks like jumbo frets. The fret job is very consistent and there are no problems like sharp fret ends or anything like that. Good job! Okay, let's check the amount of tools needed for a full setup of this guitar. From the usability perspective, it shouldn't be more than three, not counting the truss rod wrench. An Allen wrench is required to set the action, that's one. And a Phillips screwdriver is needed for the scale, that's two. And that's it, very good. These three ranges are included with the guitar, and I don't know what this one is for, there is nothing in the guitar you could possibly tweak with it. Tuning stability. 
What can I say, this guitar has a fixed bridge and a graph tech nut with strings going through the nut in a straight line, so there isn't much of an angle and very low friction. So in theory it should be staying in tune very well, although it could probably be better with locking tuners of course. Ok, let's check the weight. 2.9 kilos and this is not a headless guitar. 6.5 pounds, that's very good. The balance is just right. In this position though, it feels like the neck is slightly heavier than it should be, but the guitar still stays in place. Let's open the guitar and find out if it is properly shielded. Ok, the bigger cavity is shielded, the smaller one isn't, but both covers have an aluminum foil on the back. Although I don't really see the point of having it on this one, because there is no way it can be connected to the ground. 500k B-type alpha port for the volume and 500k D-type port for the tone made by Cortec. Yep, Cort does it right. Ok, wires, 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 wires. And that is the Ibanez pickup switch with its model number. Ok, the shielding is fine, but it looks like this smaller cavity was supposed to be shielded as well. Someone at the factory missed that. Pickup cavities, yep, shielded too, although there is no contact with the common ground, so it's not functional. Here is what different pickup combinations sound like through the clean channel of Heusenkettner Black Spirit 200. Let's compare this guitar to the RG1120PBZ, which is the flagship of Ibanez Premium series. Both guitars have two humbuckers, but 1120 has more available tones – 10 versus 6. So let's compare whatever is possible to compare. Ok, let's go for some more saturated tone and the crunch channel of the same amp. And for high gain, let's go with PV6505+. 
As always, for all sound examples, I used my favorite impulse response, which is a 1x12 speaker cab with a vintage 30 speaker inside. If you like the sound, you can, and I believe you should, grab the whole impulse pack at my website, link below. Let's test a couple of other things. Nobody likes crackling pots, right? So let's check how these two are gonna perform. That sounded clean. I also have to say that they've used a Type D pot for the tone control, which is the right thing to do because it is smooth, unlike types A or B. Does this guitar have any unexpected noise that should not be there? Well, let's find out. Yep, there definitely is something. Okay, that's much better. That's one penalty point. Now let me turn up the volume knob and listen to the amount of hum coming from this guitar. That is definitely more than there should be. Here's how it compares to other guitars. This is happening because of DiMarzio Tone Zone and Air Norton pickups, which, as you may know, I don't really like. So for a much higher than normal level of hum, this guitar gets another penalty point. And if you want to learn more about better noise management, check my noise mechanics video. Okay, let's put it all together. RG421 HPFM has received five penalty points. One for a missing gig bag, another one for a veneer even though a top was advertised, one more for a random finish issue, and two for noise and hum thanks to DiMarzo pickups. Five points in total, slightly more than an average hardtail guitar, but still on a good side. Well, that's it for now, stay tuned for the part two of this video. Hey, you've reached the end of the video, and I really appreciate that, I hope you enjoyed it. I actually want to get to know you guys, so before you go, please leave me a comment below, just, you know, say where are you from, what's your favorite guitar or guitar pedal, and how you came across my channel. If you want to support what I do, there's Patreon, and other than that, thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video someday soon.